unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is still the head of Oakwood Baptist Church, and he's still the head of each one of us. Each one of us says we are Christians. Turn your Bibles to the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, I'd like you to find chapter 15. And I'd also like you to find chapter 18. In the 15th chapter of the book of Acts, I'd like you to find the 25th verse. And in the 18th chapter of Acts, I'd like you to find the 12th verse. Why you find Acts 15 and 25 and Acts 18 and 12, I just tell you about something I noticed while I was studying for this message during this week. The Lord's been showing me some things about groups and I didn't realize it. it's always been there. But the first time men really got together, wasn't to do something that was good. Over in Genesis 11, it says that all men came together. They were all of one language. And they came together in the same place as one. Okay, that, that's the first time the scriptures mention everybody coming together as one people. And what did they decide to do when they all got together for the first time as one? They decided they would build themselves a tower. And they would build a tower that would go all the way up in heaven. And how did God feel about them building a, a, a place all the way to heaven? God said that, Behold, these people are one. They've come together. On one accord. One, one man. They all have one language. And this, they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained of them which they imagined to do. So, so the men came together in, in Genesis 11. The first time people come together, God says they came together as one in Genesis 11 and 6. And, and he's saying they came together in one and, and this is what they want to do. They want to build a tower up to heaven. They got to make themselves a shortcut in order to get to heaven. No need for Jesus if you got yourself a tower built to heaven. Don't worry about obeying God's law. We got ourselves a tower built to heaven. Paul talks about the same thing in his time. He says over in Romans, the 10th chapter, he says, For I bear them record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. So I just remind you again that God decided and already decided back in Genesis that Jesus was going to be the way. As we learned in Sunday school again last week, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Now you got Acts 15 and Acts 18. Acts 15 and 25 and Acts 18 and 12. First from Acts 15 and 25, and it reads, It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Now from Acts 18 and 12, and it reads, And when Gallio was deputy of Arcadia, 
the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. From these verses of scripture and other parts of God's holy word. Being led by God the Spirit, I'd like to speak to you for a little while from this thought. Get on one accord for good. Get on one accord for good. That's G-O-O-D. Good. Oh well, as I've been studying for this sermon today, I've, I realize that we are tribal people. Since the time of the Tower of Babel, men and women have gotten together with one another. At the Tower of Babel, those, if God divided up the language, those that spoke Chinese went over to where China is now. And, 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 and those at the Tower of Babel, those that spoke Swahili and similar type language went down south where, the, where African people were. And, and, and uh, those that spoke uh, language such as uh, Japanese went over on an island where the, where the J Japanese are now. So, so people got together and, and people got together with other people often that were like themselves. God made us this way. God made men and women so that we need one another. God could have given all of us everything that we needed in and of ourselves. But he, he delivered and made it so that we need one another. So he made it so one person could, could uh, hunt. And, but he couldn't cook. And another person could cook well, but they couldn't hunt. He made it that way. He divided up his talents on purpose. He divided up his skills on purpose. So that we need one another. So he wants us to come together, but he wants us to come together for good. Get on one accord for good. As people start to group up, it's interesting that it doesn't take much for people to identify with one group or another. People can be the best of friends, and, and then they go to a ball game, and one has on green, and he gets with the green group. And another one has on red, and he gets with the red group, and, and now they own different groups, and they're against one another, and they each want their group to be better than their friends group. Some people will identify so greatly with their group that they are willing to hurt themselves and everyone else just so their group can win. There was a scientist that, that just wanted to, he did a little experiment and he brought people in and he put dots on a page and he asked the people to guess how many dots were on the page and regardless of what they said, he, he'd already decided he put Half of them in a group, and he called them underestimated. So, so he come in, and you guess how many dots on on the on the page, and you say a thousand. He said, mm, "You must be an overestimator." And so he he tell you you are in the overestimated group. And then he have you do something else that I'll tell you about in a minute. If you came in, somebody else comes in and say, mm, "About be a thousand on that page." He'll say, "Oh, you are an underestimated group." The number of dots didn't change. And the guess might have been exactly the same, but he'd already decided he was going to put half the people in the underestimated group and half in the overestimated group. And then the next part is, is what's what he's really trying to determine. He, he wanted to see what you favor, what you be biased towards, whatever group he made up that you were in. So he gave the people some fake money. And he said, here is a fake $10. You can give, you can assign five dollars to your group and five dollars to the other group. But but if you want to make a different assignment and equally, you got to pay me three dollars. 
And then you can assign $4 to your group and $3 to the other group. And he just thought, he was just sure that him just making up that people were in one group or another wouldn't make any difference, that, that they wouldn't favor one group over another. But he was surprised to find out that most people, not all, but most people would hurt their own group just to make sure their group won. Now, now listen, they just came in to the lab and he told them they were in a particular group. They had never met anybody else in the group that he made up. He let them make that, as, that allocation of, of fake money before they left out. And so they didn't know anybody from, from the overestimated group or the underestimated group. He just made that up for them. And still, they were willing to hurt their group. And everybody else, just so they would have a win. Because my understanding is $5 is more than $4. And so by giving away $3, the best they could do was give $4 to their group and $3 to the other group according to the way he set things up. But, but he was willing to get, they were willing, the majority of people were willing giving less to a group that they just been assigned to, that been made up, just so they could get a win. There are people that are even hurt members of their own group. If they think the person is not loyal enough to the group. That's why you see some people doing something they know doesn't make any sense. And, and they do it because they, they know that other people in their group will attack them. If they find out that you're not doing enough for the group. I've told you this before. I told you this well when it first happened. I was teaching over in Alabama and it was a time for the annual game between Alabama and Auburn and on what's called a kick six uh, it happened to be that Alabama tried to kick a field goal and, and it came short and, and uh, the Auburn coach had a fellow who caught the ball and ran it back for a touchdown and, Call it back for the for the for the points, and that that mean that mean Al that Auburn beat Alabama. One game, one year. Most time Alabama wins, but but this one time Auburn won. So so one game, one year. Came back came back to came back home and and, and went back for for that next weekend. It was on the news in Alabama. There were two women coming out of the ball game after Alabama had lost. And they were laughing and talking. Now they had on the right Alabama colors, but they were laughing and talking. This other lady with the same colors on. She took out a gun and shot one of the women. As they, as they got her and, and let her explain herself, she was so mad that Alabama had lost the game to Auburn. And here was these other people that were a member of her own group. And she thought they weren't sad enough. Because Alabama got just lost. So they so she decided to kill. Now she's she was in jail the last time. I, I knew I knew her, but there's some people. That's so identified with their group that they will willing to hurt other people that are in the same group that they are. And of course, if they're going to hurt people in their own group, they will certainly decide to hurt people outside of their group. Yes, some people even hurt themselves just in order to try to get a win for their group. So being in a group is a powerful thing. Men can do great things. People can do great things when they come together. 
Things can be changed when we come together on one accord. But when you come together, get on one accord for good, not things that were evil. In our scripture today, in Acts 15, Peter, Paul, Barnabas, and Jesus, brother James, and all the rest of the church at Jerusalem came together on one accord. They came together to help get God's word out. They said, it seems good to us being assembled on one accord to send chosen men with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. We send therefore Judas and Silas who shall also tell you the same thing by mouth. They came together for the good of the word. Get together on one accord for good. But not only the men that are on God's side get together for the cause that they have. Over in Acts, the 18th chapter, Paul was preaching in the place called Corn. And he'd been there for a year and a half. And the people were believing in this man named Jesus. But now Satan had his people to get together on one accord. Because when it was, Galileo was deputy, that the Jews made insurrection with one accord. They came together against Paul and brought him up before the judgment seat, saying, This man persuade men contrary to our law. And when Paul was about to open his mouth. Galileo said unto the Jews, if it were a matter of something that might be wrong, then you might have a reason that I might bear with you. But if it's just a question of words and name, then take him in, take him off. I will not judge such. And then he drove them from out of the judgment seat. As they left her from out of the judgment seat, they saw the chief priest over of the synagogue, and they took him and beat up on him. They got together on one accord, but they got together to stop God's gospel. Get together on one accord, but get together for something that is good. Then there was another crowd they got together one day. The Pharisees didn't like the Sadducees. But there was another that they got together on. They came together on one accord. Because they didn't like this man named Jesus. They got together and brought them some troops. And they went out and arrested Jesus. They marched him from hall to hall. They took him and beat on him. They took him and spat on him. They took a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Then they had him nailed to a cross. He died. He died one Friday. He died, but he wasn't by himself. He had somebody else on his side because it's one for the Father and another for the Son and another for the Holy Ghost. So he might have died, died that Friday. But Jesus, he didn't stay dead. Cause early on Sunday morning, he got up out of that grave. He got up, he got up, he got up. Yes, he got up on that Friday. Let's be together, Hope Will, on one accord. But when we are together, let's do good. Let's get on one accord for good.